Final thing I want to do is I'm going to put a little bit of a sparkly going on there. Because I quite like sparklies. Come into here and, you know, there's all sorts of different layouts. And I'm going to use this kind of particle template. Now what I could do is to grab one of those and just drag it and throw it onto the text. But I'm not going to. I'm going to make up my own. Make sure I can see the timeline. Make sure nothing's selected. Come up to the plug and I'm going to choose this one, 3D Particle. This is an extra plugin that you can get for VizTitle. You can buy it with VizTitle or you can buy it without. Currently you can buy it on a special offer where you get this particle and a couple of others with the program when you buy it, included in the price. Normally it costs you about £70 or so extra. And what I want to do is I want to create a particle which sort of twirls around a little bit. So what I've done so far is I've loaded this up and it's come into the interface and at the moment I've got nothing at all. Interface here, pretty similar to the regular Viz title interface. In other words, you've got a timeline, you've got a preview area, a bunch of buttons, and you've also got here some presets. What you'll see is that with some of these effects, like these trailing particles, they really have to be moving around. You can vaguely see something going on there, some of the others maybe not. But the easiest way to find out what's happening is just to come in the window and then drag. Now you get a much better idea of what happens as that flies around. Lovely little preview window, this. Got all sorts of trailing particles here. Ooh, I quite like that one. If I click on the list here, I can go to lighting effects. I can do bursts of explosions, fireworks. I've got all sorts of funny looking effects. Star fields, there we are. Bit of a Star Trek warp there. And I've got graphic elements. So things like plain old numbers, audio, and dynamic backgrounds. For the moment, I'm just going to go straight for the trailing particles. And I'm going to go for this higher flaming trail. So I want to take my flaming trail and make it flame across the screen. I could actually spend hours and hours and hours talking about the particle emitter. This will be a basic run through. So for a start, I need to choose where this particle is coming from. This is the sort of thing that works very well if it comes out of a single point. So what all these things do is they let you count particles out of a point or out of a line or a box or a circle or whatever. This works best as a point, so I'm just going to choose that and click on the screen and that puts in a particle emitter. You know, so I can pick it up and move it around, but as I'm moving it across the screen, I'm not actually seeing any of the fancy particles I saw down here. What this is actually doing is it's just emitting little particles, and particles are just little blobs coming out of that spot. If the emitter doesn't move, then the particles just stay in one place. So if I just press the play button here, you notice them just sitting there. I'm only going to get this trail by making that emitter move. So I need to animate it. So let's come down here to the actual timeline, open it up, and you can see the same kind of controls that I have got in the other parts of this title for transform and all the rest of it. These things here are controlling particular things about the particles. I'm just going to go to the transform and adjust this thing. Translate. Translate being the up, down, left and right. I'm going to grab it and start it off screen. So, so far it's off screen and I need to animate it. Now, you remember in the main interface I would just move along and then grab hold of whatever else I wanted to change and it would create a keyframe. Well, it doesn't here. Simplest thing is I put a keyframe at the start, let's move it along and so at that point I'm going to want it to be say about here. So, add in a keyframe now at this point I'd normally come up here and grab and move and yeah it looks like it's put a path in there. It's actually put it the wrong way around. I find it a lot easier when I'm doing particles. Let's just undo it, control Z, to go to a keyframe like this and then start to use the numbers to move stuff around. Because I now know I'm on that keyframe and I can drag these numbers and I'm changing the correct keyframe. Move it along a bit, stick in another keyframe, drag again move along a bit more and then let's just fly him downwards and off screen. Now I put those things in at random points. You notice there that there's an awful lot of keyframes between those two, less between there, all those little white dots of keyframes and a lot less there, which represents, you know, basically how far they are apart. If I move those around in time, then those dots will change. But if I press the play button now, you can see it flies in, flies up, goes around the corner and goes off. Yeah, okay like a little bit more moving in there. Let's pop back to that keyframe and I'm going to move it down a bit and then pop to this keyframe and move it up a bit 
and pop to the final keyframe and then move it down a bit. Go to the individual points, right click and say smooth and you can do a nice smoother Bezier handled line. Again, just like your regular animation. And there we are, I've got that flying in, twirling around and flying off. If I click on OK and get out of that, you notice the particles are now here. A bit short, so let's drag it out and make it longer. And now it flies around a bit better. A bit slower because I've made the path longer, but it's still flying around.